A cute little fresh new perspective. Oh my gosh, someone please stop me. This is the new Debbie Ryan hair tuck. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to a new video. This is very exciting for me because this is the first year that I've been on booktube, which means that this is the first time that I can talk about like my best books that I read this year. I was such an avid consumer of these book videos. I still feel like I'm just like a spectator. Like today I'm gonna be talking about the best books that I read in 2021. I'm filming this on December 23rd, by the way. I just finished school. Like I literally just had my last exam. Which I might finish books after this point. I don't know if they'll become one of my best books of 2021. They could. If they do, um, I guess they're just gonna be like lost in the void or whatever. So I don't have a set number of books. I know that some people do like a top whatever number that they read this year. Um, I didn't do that because if I liked the book like i just liked it like i don't really know it. and also not all these books were books that were released in 2021 they're just books that i read in 2021 in fact i think that the majority of these were probably not released in 2021 also these are not in any particular order i just took these from my goodreads which means that they're in the like, chronological order so the books that i read first are gonna come first also i didn't include any non-fiction books that i read simply because all the non-fiction that i read are mostly like memoirs first of all i enjoy every single memoir that i read and second of all i feel like it's weird to like they're so personal so i feel like it's weird to like pit them against each other and like pick favorites like they're literally just a person's life um, so yeah, that's that's it. Okay, the first book that was one of the best books that I read was the first book that I read this year actually Legend Board by Tracy Dion and the second book the second book is coming out. I'm so excited. This book was so fun for me to read because A, it takes place on a campus and I'm in university right now. And B, it brings me back to that time when like urban fantasy and like magical society and realizing that you are a part of it and you didn't know. That whole vibe that was so prominent in my middle school years comes back with this book, except it's not just saturated with white characters anymore. We follow Brie. She goes to like this early campus kind of program where she gets to like spend her last years of high school on this university campus. Basically, she joins this secret society of people called Legendborn. They're basically like descendants of the Knights of the Round Table, like from King Arthur. And their job is to hunt and like kill the demons that are on campus. So basically she joins the society in order to, I guess like infiltrate them. And obviously there is a love triangle. Okay, it's like not like really come to fruition yet, but I know that it's going to. I know who I'm rooting for. And if you know me, then you also know who I'm rooting for. I'll just say that. A huge part of this book is Brie exploring her own family history and discovering her roots and how that like interacts with the secret society. The plot of this book is so next level. It's so freaking good. I cannot wait for this book series. It's just so exciting to see non-white stories like this being told because I'm a non-white person, but I loved these stories when I was in middle school. I just wish that more books like this and more authors writing books like this would be pushed by the industry. So I'm trying my meager best to push these books, please go read this book if you haven't read it yet and we can read the rest of the series together. Ah, I'm very excited. It's really giving early 2010s like urban fantasy vibes but better. So yeah. Okay, the next book that quickly became one of my all-time favorites and that I want to reread again is Eleanor Olfin is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This book, they've been saying that this book is becoming a movie, so give it to me now. Where is it? Tell me that. Where is the movie? This is an adult contemporary literary fiction, which by the way is one of my favorite genres, but I don't really talk about that much on my channel. We follow a, a girl named Eleanor Olfin, obviously, and she's not completely fine, actually. She just thinks that she is. She's like this 30-year-old woman who works like a 9-to-5 office job. It's kind of like slice of life like we just see a little bit about her life and you quickly realize that everything is not fine and that some things are deviating from the typical daily life and we're inside her head it's from her point of view so we hear all of her thought processes especially the interactions with her mother you quickly realize that this is a very toxic and abusive relationship eleanor has no idea mel has no clue the story kicks off when she and the new it guy in her office help this old man and that's the start of their relationship you just kind of see their relationship flourish we're mainly following eleanor and her life you just kind of see her come to terms with everything that's happened in her life and you don't really get the whole picture until like the very end i love when books do that um because then you can go back and reread it with like a fresh new perspective a cute little fresh new perspective oh my gosh someone please stop me this is the new debbie ryan hair tuck it was one of the most touching stories that i read absolutely bald like a baby in this one too and i just love the relationship that she has with raymond who's the it guy they're like friends to lovers kind of is just so stunning and like really set the bar i would literally give my left arm for that movie the next best book that i read in 2021 was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, which I feel like is kind of a given. Like I was a Cassandra Clare girl. Surprise, surprise. If you didn't know, now you know. But I've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit. Like I feel like Infernal Devices and then a little bit of the Dark Artifices was like peak for me. Um, but then after that, I kind of fell off of it because I'm like not as invested in this new series, The Last Hours. But of course, I still love Cassandra Clare's writing. Like no one really does romantic relationships the way that she does. Anyway, this is like a companion, 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 companion series. We're following the kids 
kids of The Infernal Devices, which is like my favorite book series. But I don't really care about the kids as much as I do about their parents. But I still am following this series. I'll still read the next one. But I don't really like any of the main characters except for Matthew freaking Fairchild. I have an entire Pinterest board that's dedicated to him because I love him so much. I think it's because he's the one who gives the most Will Harendale vibes. Even though Will Harendale's son, James, Harendale is, is literally the main character. Matthew is giving me second male lead syndrome. I don't really know what to do about that. But I love him so much. Like I would actually like fall in love with him, yeah. The next best book that I read in 2021 was Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Um, I love this book. <laughs> Bald like a baby at the end of this book too. I was in dance rehearsal when I finished it. I turned off my camera, turned off my sound, and I was just crying while my teammates were dancing. Again, this is an adult contemporary literary fiction. It really feels satirical. The story starts off with a bank robber who robs a cashless bank. So then they freak out and run to the nearest apartment complex and they go into the apartment viewing that's happening in that apartment complex and hold everyone at the viewing hostage. Present day we're following the investigation and we follow two police officers who are trying to interview these people There's like interview transcripts and stuff and then in alternating chapters We follow what exactly happened inside that apartment because it was like locked. Nobody knows what happened in that apartment That's what the police are trying to figure out. Like they're trying to catch the bank robber It gets more and more wild and complex as the story goes on It's like a deep character dive into each of the people who ended up in that apartment viewing how they ended up there And then we discover all of the random connections that people have with each other kind of like a butterfly flaps wings and then all the the side of the world there's a hurricane you know any big trigger warning for like depression and suicide in this book by the way next is the downstairs girl by stacy lee i love this book i actually want to reread it a lot and i want a physical copy just because first of all the book is like really beautiful second of all i want to reread it third of all i want to annotate it and fourth of all this was the first time that i read a historical fiction with an asian american lead in it and it kind of blew my mind like i don't know why i literally thought that like asian americans like literally just didn't exist in history actually i do know why it's because no textbooks and no history class ever i talked about it before which is why stacy lee is my queen and savior. It was like the first time that I kind of saw myself in a book, which sounds strange because first of all, I'm not American. Second of all, I'm not Chinese American like the girl in this book is. I'm Korean Canadian, but you know the vibe. Like it feels like I'm seeing my own history, if that makes sense. Even though we immigrated here right when I was born. So I like my family doesn't have any roots here or anything like that. But you know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Because of that reason, this book was one of my favorite books that I read. It was like very influential. You know what I mean? Oh, it's about a girl. I forget what her name is. Okay, yeah, we follow a girl named Jo. She's Chinese American. She ends up becoming one of like secret like agony ant column for like the newspaper where basically like, people write to her and she gives like advice and stuff like that. She's writing about like racial inequality, class inequality, gender inequality, all that stuff that nobody wants to hear about during that time. And so it stirs up the pot and it's like a love story between her and the son of the house that she's living under. I'm actually in love with him. And I just like this book. It was fun and it was easy to read. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, but I'll read Stacey Lee's historical fiction. Okay, next we have In the Afterlight by Alexandra Bracken. This is the third book in the Darkest Mind series which I only read this year which is astounding because this is one of my favorite series of all time and I read the first one in like grade 6 um but we don't talk about that the first book is The Darkest Minds the second book is Never Fade and the third book is In the Afterlife this takes place in a world where there was this massive disease that wiped out like all the children except for like 2% the children who survived this disease manifest power and then obviously the government being what the government is they incarcerated all of these kids our main character is Ruby Daly she is the most rare and dangerous kind of like like power she joins like this group of kids who are also on the run and they're trying to go find like their safe haven you know i love this series because of the love story pinterest board dedicated to liam like can i just say that i would actually marry him like out of every single book series okay that's a bold statement i feel like out of all the book series that i've read like in real life like i would actually marry him i would actually want to cuff him like for real i was not disappointed at all i love this book series every single book slaps in the series including the third one i love the ending i love this so much okay the next books that i'm going to talk about are books that i talked about in a video that i just filmed I I talk about all the TikTok books that I'm obsessed with. I made that separate video because I knew that this video would be ages long if I, you know, explained every single one of these books. Um, so go watch that video to see me talk more about it. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love that book. It's about this fictional celebrity like Marilyn Monroe type. She is basically recounting her life. She was married seven times in her life and that's basically what this book is about and it made me fall. It has some of the best quotes I've ever seen ever and I love Evelyn Hugo. And Evelyn Hugo felt really, really real. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I love this book. It's probably Probably one of my favorite friends lovers books that I've ever read ever. Follow Poppy and Alex. They've been friends since their freshman year of college. We follow each of their vacations that they would take together every single year until this one vacation where something happened and they haven't been on speaking terms ever since. And then in the present day, they're going on one last vacation together to try to like salvage their friendship. You see all the angst, how they became friends. And this book is actually a drug. Some of the best friends lovers banter I've ever read in my entire life. Next is Malibu Rising, also by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one actually follows the family of one of Evelyn Hugh 
those husbands but like that's not that significant we follow him falling in love with june and then we follow their kids growing up and then in present day we follow their kids now famous surfer siblings and they're throwing like the biggest party of the year in malibu and all of the family drama and at the core this is like a family drama in my opinion taylor jenkins reads writing again pops off in this book you just see everything that has happened in their lives that has made all of the characters the way that they are today you kind of see them each coming to terms with their demons it's a great summer read in my opinion next it ends with us by clean hoover i bawled my eyes out at the end of this book the book is about a woman named lily she meets a guy named ryle they start this big love story right then lily rediscovers some diary entries that she wrote back when she was in high school and so we see flashbacks to her first love that she met in high school you know how they got away and i don't want to spoil it but it's like it's so good it's very impactful i think this is one of those books that i want to reread i would actually love to see this book become a film adaptation i think that it would be a good movie in my opinion oh also this has like such a good young love friends to lovers story in it as well okay the last book that i want to talk about is the savage song by v.e schwab this was the first v.e schwab book that i read and i know that she's like everybody's favorite author i think that she mostly writes adult this is one of her few like ya books that she wrote this is a duology kind of like a dystopian fantasy this takes place in like a city that's split up into two this world has humans and it has monsters and so we follow a girl named kate who's a human it's dual pov we follow the other main character who's a boy named august and he's a monster it's like secret identity each of them are from like the warring sides of the city they're both the children of like the ruling political leader and they're sent to like go spy on each other and that's how they meet and that's how they become friends so it kind of gave me like six of crows legend by marie lu mashed up together it's like super super slow burn and they build like a solid foundation on friendship and trust before it becomes anything near romantic Hi, don't kill me, I'm back. I am back because I don't know what I was thinking while I was filming that video because I was just looking at my Goodreads end of the year wrap up and I was like, oh, I really missed a lot of important books, um, which means that they're not gonna be in chronological order anymore, so... I love self-sabotage and Ember in the Ashes by Sava Tahir, which I still need to finish the series. I read the first book and I successfully read it because if you know, I tried rereading this book many times in my life and I never was able to successfully complete it except this year I did and it was like such a good book so I don't know what I was on when I was trying to read it for the first time. Yeah, this is like a YA historical, like a fantasy dystopian type vibe. We follow two characters, Elias. Is his name Elias? He's like a soldier and then Leia or is it Leia? She's like a spy, a spy for the rebellion. It's been a long time since I read this book, but she goes undercover as like a slave, like a servant for the resistance, them to me and they fall in love. So it's like star cross secret identity, enemies to lovers type vibe. And it was really good. It was like like YA fantasy dystopian vibes that I, I love reading so much and I've missed reading because I feel like this book is kind of old. I feel like they don't really make them like this anymore. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. It's a historical fiction. It's really, really popular. I believe that it's being turned into a movie. These movie studios need to stop baiting me by saying that all these movies are going to come out and it's like three years later and nothing's happened yet. A historical fiction during World War II, we follow two sisters. It's very touching. We hear the story about the sisters and the ending for this made me bawl like a baby as well. I actually have it um, on video. Um, don't watch it. Shout out to the entire Gilded Wolves series. I feel like none of these books individually was a standout standout book, but I finished the entire trilogy this year and I, oops, I really enjoyed the entire series because of one couple, Enrique and Enrique and Sophia. It's been a long time since I've read like a true, true slow burn couple because they're rare. They're really few and far between. I just love Enrique as a character. He's definitely become one of my favorites. This is about a group of people who are living in like a fantastical historical France. They're all Pac, which we love. Love. We love Pocky. And they go on heist together. There's a little sprinkling of magic in it too. That personally, I never really fully understood because it's kind of complicated, but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of this book. When We Were Infinite by Kelly Lloyd Gilbert. Um, why a contemporary coming of age. Um, look up the content warnings for this. It's crazy how well these characters are all written and it's not cringy, the dialogue between the friend group, which I hate so much about why contemporaries. If the dialogue between the friend group is cringy, I'm like, please, these adults do be trying to catfish us into thinking that they can write teenagers. Oh, I'll, again, it's an all Asian cast, which I love so much. Mm. Dial A for Anties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. It was such a fun book too. This is literally the funniest book I've ever read in my entire life. It's so freaking funny. It's about a girl who accidentally murders her blind date and she recruits all of her Asian aunties to like help cover up the crime. Um, They accidentally end up taking the corpse to the wedding and it's like hijinks ensue and it's really, really funny. So I highly recommend that one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that love? Love, one of my favorite artists, by the way. That's his vocals in the intro to that song. I like me better. He goes, 
mm, 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 mm. and he like synthesized it and like produced it so that it sounded like that anyway really random but the atlas six i enjoyed a lot by olive blake of course again it's because it is a slow burn couple in this such a slow burn enemies to lovers that they're still like arch enemies in this literally because of them it's like dark academia fantasy type vibe there are these six people who are recruited to join the secret society only five of them will actually be initiated there's like an academic rival enemies to lovers story arc that is just taking off like it's literally like nothing has happened but i can already see the vibes and then also the book that i literally just finished reading which was our violent ends which is a sequel to these violent delights by chloe dong is again one of my favorite series that i finished it was so freaking good it's a romeo and juliet retelling set in 1920s shanghai it's like romeo and juliet except also second chance romance so they're like lovers to enemies to lovers i guess in the series we all know how i feel about second chance i'm not really a big fan but the plot of this book and also marshall who is one of the characters the plot and marshall is the reason why i love this book so much i promise i'm not being biased just because he's korean like i, I swear to god that that's not it like he's literally just the best character him and benedict are like the reason that i love this book series so much but anyway those are actually the best books should i talk about the i know i said before that i wasn't going to talk about all of the non-fiction like memoirs that i read because all of them would make my 2021 best books list i'll list all of them how to be an anti-racist by ibram x kendi i'm still here black dignity in a world made for whiteness by austin channing brown over the top by jonathan van ness i'm naturally tan by tan france when breath becomes air by paul kalanithi oh becoming by michelle obama of course okay yeah i think that's all for this year but i loved all of those books yeah okay i think that that's everything Okay, those are all the books. Let me know what your favorite books that you read in 2021 were. And I guess I'll see you all in the new year. I don't know when this video is going out. I don't know if I'm gonna have this uploaded like before the end of 2021. Here's hoping for 2022. That's a lot better than 2021. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more from me. Follow me on Instagram at Kim Reads, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.